This is Diana Lenska. And I'm Matthew K. Smith. And this is Indie View, where you, the independent filmmaker, and your film are the stars. For today's episode of Indie View, we have two very fascinating and very different kind of shorts. But the first one we're going to see the trailer of is called A Godly Manor. Matthew Malinsky is both the director and writer of this very interesting twist and turns film. So let's take a little look at the trailer first and then we'll start discussing and commenting on this film. Yes. Oh, again, this is a Matthew Malinsky film. The production company is Donut Guy Productions. Very mm -hmm. clever. And the film was starring Stephen Foote and Elizabeth Rail. And as far as uh, I try to, uh, whether I should or not, judge a book by its cover. When you read the title of mm -hmm. this particular film, I mean, you can kind of go anywhere. But all I can say is the film itself didn't go anywhere where I thought it was going to go. <laughs> it didn't go anywhere. And I mean, I'm watching it for the first, mm -hmm. uh, you know, five, five or so minutes, I and, and I still had no idea where it was going to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, once that mystery was was out, and, and you could kind of tell where it was going, you still, I mean, you're always trying to stay a step ahead. A little game I like to play mm -hmm. when I'm watching films. I think a lot of people do that, um, and I, I couldn't guess anything. So what I'm saying is, there was a lot of nice writing in there as far yes. as twists. Um, and as far as its uh, technical abilities uh, of, of the uh, of the cast and crew, I mean, everything was was flawless. Right on. Um, excellent cinematography, great use of lighting. I'm not a music? cinematographer or, or a lighting expert, but yes, the yes. music. I, I I definitely am one of those guys that zeroes in on sound, um, and I like to listen to the movies with headphones just so I can do that. And um, I thought they did an amazing job with with all that there. Um, very minor things, only because I'm super picky about that. Very minor things as far as mixing. He's our uh, critic. But, uh, but yes, yeah, as, as far as uh, the, the big picture of things, nothing distracting. There's In independent movies, there's always those times where there's mm -hmm. something that snaps you out of it and reminds you this is a low-budget or independent film, right? And I didn't have any of those snap-out-of-it moments. I was immersed, and I was following the characters. The acting was great. Everything was, was uh, very high end, like I said, except for very subtle moments. But you know what? Even when I listen to those big budget films, uh, I hear things yes. there too. That, uh, and you see I'm a little things. weird. I'm a little picky when it comes to this. When you think that Hollywood has all the millions of dollars they have, yeah. being a judge as I have been for the last few years in quite a few film festivals, I'm often amazed at the quality of submissions with the budgets. When you learn yeah. what the budgets are in some for of these sure. films. Now, if you've been into film festivals, any of the filmmakers, um, you probably know that you have filmmakers who maybe have a film with no budget, which could be anywhere from a few hundred dollars to nothing to maybe ten, fifteen thousand, to low budget, to films that are over a million dollars that would still be considered an independent film. But I always marvel when a filmmaker creates a film and they do it on that nothing budget, very small budget, and you have the acting right on. Mm -hmm. You have the technical aspects, you have the audio, 
and you wonder, how come Hollywood can't pull off these yeah. things yeah, all on these smaller budgets? I have the same thought of, uh, very often when I'm watching and reviewing any independent film. Uh, back to the story itself, uh, I thought the story in general was, uh, the, the writing of the story concept was uh, above average. Yes. There's a lot of these espionage-ish types of stories that are out there. I'm a big fan of them. Mm -hmm. I, like, I can never seem to get enough of them. But because of that, it feels like to me that perhaps I'm just oversaturated because there's like there's very little new things that you could do so there's very little new creative uh, twists that you could do but well, probably, that being said they they did have a, yes. a good amount of twists that I was not expecting because I think almost every film at some point of time has something whether they are aware of it or not that they maybe have taken without even maybe being aware from something that was done before sure. it isn't so much that somebody is doing something that maybe was done before but how they are doing it, and does it hold your interest? Are they putting enough of something new or the twists and turns to draw the audience in? I think uh, the chemistry um, between the two actors, um, Elizabeth Rail and Stephen Foote, I think was probably yes. um, very uh, addictive. So it's, mm -hmm. every time you saw them together and interacting, there wasn't even the slightest hint of unconvincing character or, or um, lack of immersion in their moment. It, it was every single time. Again, this was one of those that, for the most part, beginning to end, I never snapped out of it. Yes, and the ending will be a bit of a surprise uh, to, to audience viewers, but we're going to go to our next film, which is from Australia. Uh, the uh, producer is Thean Nugent. The film is called Saint Paul. We're going to show you a trailer of St. Paul right now, and then Matt and I will come back to review the film. being done in black and white and what was your first perception of the subject matter? I'll, I'll be straight up with you and tell you that I had to watch this twice. Mm -hmm. First of all, the, the answer to your first question of the black and white, I think if it was not in black and white it would have been harder to absorb. Mm -hmm. The fact that it was simple visually, color with, with, with a lack of color, helped to absorb this this uh, cerebrally dense material, I guess you could say. The, the philosophical and deep thought material that is provided in this particular film, I don't know if I would have been able to absorb uh, as, as much as I did, which I think might have been only a little bit anyway, with a colorful picture in front of me as well. So now, I liked the choice. Now do you know what the concept is of St. Paul? Well, I probably don't. Biblical. <laughs> if, if you are a Christian or somebody who knows the Bible, you would be aware. Not that this is a religious film, but the producer is taking aspects of the biblical conversion of St. Paul and using symbolism in this particular film okay. uh, between good and evil, darkness and light, and the impact it has on all our life. And the three days of no sight. Yes. I oh, totally miss that. Sense. I mean, I, yes. I have a lot of biblical heritage in my mm -hmm. past, and it went right past my bat, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. But, I, I mean, it was very, still, nonetheless, even if you don't pick up on that, there are a lot of little nuggets yes. of, of phrases mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, philosophy and, and deep thoughts of that nature that you can still 
go back and, and listen to, review, right. and several think about times. it. Watch the film any, several times, yeah. and you'll always be picking yes. up on something new with this uh, short film. St. Paul will be screened at the Chautauqua International Film Festival with a godly manner the end of July 2017, Jamestown, New York, Hotel Jamestown. So this is it for another exciting episode of Indie View. We hope you will come back next week to see Matt and I show trailers and give reviews on independent films. If you want to contact us, you can send it to our Twitter. Indie View is on Twitter. Or send us an email at IndieViewTV at gmail.com. This is Diana Lenska. And I'm Matthew K. Smith. And this was Indie View. Thanks for watching.